want to continue today on these lessons for mentorship from Paul and Timothy. And today we're actually going to go to one of my favorite passages in Scripture, which is 1 Timothy chapter 6. And it's in here that we the, the this book ends and chapter 6 ends with this charge that Paul is giving to Timothy. And I'm going to, I'm going to read a majority of this today, and I'm going to read it slowly. I want you just to kind of, you know, if you're listening, just close your eyes and kind of take these words. And again, this is Paul's charge to Timothy. He says, But you, man of God, flee from all of this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And then he goes on in verse 13. He says, In the sight of God who gives life to everything and Christ Jesus who while testifying before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honor and might forever. Amen. And he ends with this in verse 17. I'm just going to read kind of verses 17 and 18, but he says, command those who are rich in this present world, not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. And then verse 19, in this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Man, there's a lot to unpack here in this charge to Timothy. And I would encourage you to open your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and go to verses, you know, 11 through 19, 11 through 20, uh, 21. But go there and read this today and just read through it very slowly. But I want to simplify it for the podcast sake today because Paul's charge as a mentor to his protege, he's saying, number one, flee from ungodliness, flee from it, from the things that are bringing you down in this world, from the evil desires, from your flesh. Like we need to do everything as men to flee. Number two, he's saying, instead, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. So flee from these things that will bring you down and instead pursue these things. So a great lesson here in mentorship is that a great mentor will look for things in a protege's life and say, listen, no, 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 no. We got to consider to flee from these things and instead pursue this. And protégés obviously have to respond for mentorship a biblical mentorship to really come to fruition for transformation to start to take place in a man's life. We need to flee from what is evil, right? And we need to pursue that, which is righteous. Number three, he's encouraging him in these passages to fight the good fight of faith. Many of you have maybe heard us even say this on this podcast, but we've never read an account in scripture where God calls a man to do something in God's will, of God's will, of God's plans, whether it's an assignment, whether it's an opportunity, when God calls man to do, I've never read an account in scripture where God calls a man to do something that's easy. And so that's why Paul is telling him, telling Timothy here, hey, you've got to fight the good fight of the faith. And the only way that we can do that is, in number four, he's reminding him, hey, you have to think eternally here. Think about eternity. Think eternally eternally as you're living out your life. And then I love this last part, which Paul is really encouraging Timothy to those people that are following him. He's encouraging him, hey, command humility, command good works from your people, command generosity. So why am I sharing this, guys? Well, these are lessons for mentorship. And sometimes I believe we overcomplicate it and we don't know what to talk about or we're wondering is like our time spending together as mentor and protege, is it really beneficial? Like, what do we do in this time? We see it play out here with Paul and Timothy, man, 
we can talk about the things that we need to flee from and instead replace those with things that we need to pursue. We need to talk about fighting the good fight of faith as men between mentor and protege. Mentors and proteges alike, we need to think eternally. So let's have a conversation around that. Like, what is bringing me down in this world that's keeping me off the course and off the path that God has for me? Oftentimes, it's because we're focusing on the right here and the right now rather than thinking about the investment we're making now is really, we're going to get that return on that investment in eternity. So how are we spending our time right now? How are we using our words right now? What are our priorities right now? If it doesn't line up with eternity, man, we've got to kind of reconsider our priorities. And then lastly, it talks about commanding humility and good works and generosity. Man, how humble are we in this approach? Are we, are we modeling good works? Are we serving those around us? Are we giving generously? Man, what an awesome passage of scripture here as a mentor and protege, as a charge from a mentor and protege to flee from the things that don't matter, to pursue the things that do, to fight the good fight of faith, to think eternally and to command humility, good works and generosity. Man, I hope this spoke to somebody today. Guys, go out there, get on the mountain, mentor or be mentored. We'll talk to you guys next time.